to decide which team we talk about first, let me pose a question. Okay. Of these four teams, which team's performance in this Euros do you think will be the most unpredictable? Oh, okay. Unpredictable? Unpredictable. Or toughest to kind of gauge how they're going to come out swinging in this, in this tournament. I, I'm inclined to say either Croatia or Italy. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Italy's a weird one because they're the reigning champs. <laughs> you, you, you'd hope a lot higher if they had that title. Fucking football, man! It's, it's so nuts to me. Man. Yeah, Italy's an interesting one, man. They're so interesting to me, and actually, I'm looking for help from you, and I'm actually looking for help from the fans in the comments because yeah, I, I'm debating about where I should put Italy in this group. It's one of the few teams where I actually couldn't select a spot a a position for them in the group because i need to see what the discourse and what the rest of the people say because my research left me confused man Mm -hmm. left me confused coached by luciano spalletti ranked number nine in fifa's rankings and the defending champions that's the narrative defending champions of the euros defeating england in penalties with names like donnarumma bastoni scalvini barella Jorginho, Di Marco, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scamaca, uh, Federico Chiesa. Really, really good players on this team and a lot of squad depth. I just, I get so curious, bro. What version of Italy are we going to see? I have the exact same qualms about Italy, man. I really do. And I, I'd be surprised if most people didn't. Truly, yeah, truly. Yeah. Because you look at Italy the past, uh, even 12 years, eight, 10 years. Dude, they haven't been to a World Cup since 2014. <laughs> it's crazy. been a decade since Italy have been to a World Cup. I was saying Mexico and Germany have been bad. Italy's been way, way worse. And then they won the last Euros. <laughs> it, it just, it, there's no explaining it. There's not a mastermind formula that some genius crafted last Euros and was like, oh, Italy's going to win. There's not a single person who predicted that they could do it. But then once we saw Italy get going in the Euros three years ago, oh my it God, it made, sense. it made sense. They looked unstoppable. They found such good form. And of course, when you looked at the squad, it, it did make sense. I mean, you already listed some of the players that won three years ago. They are here now in Germany. There's some serious talent that Italy have. The problem is, is that even even recently in their Euro qualification, they've been hot and cold, man. Yeah. They, they, they had a weird qualification where, yes, they look good at times, but they couldn't beat England twice. They had two chances to beat them. They couldn't do it. And I think that's where Italy is right now. They, they can beat the teams that are lesser than them. And sometimes, honestly, they even underwhelm against those teams. But when they play against the bigger teams, I don't know if the, this specific Italy team really has it in them. But the, the, the thing is, as I said that three years ago, mm-hmm. I said the same thing mm-hmm. three years ago. I will say, though, there's some holes in this Italy side specifically that make me think that there's just no way they make a deep run like they did three years where, ago. Where do you think that is? Because when I think about the offense, I think about Scamaca finishing the season off really strong for Atalanta. Mm-hmm. And then I got a Chiesa playing really well for Juventus. Midfield looks pretty good to me. Barella, Di Marco, and these Inter Milan guys, honestly. And yeah. the backline has Bastoni, Scalvini. Where do you think the where do you think the weakness is then? It's in that third midfield position. So obviously the good is Nicolo Barella and Jorginho. And I actually want to highlight Barella really quickly because <laughs> my goodness, dude, he has had what, three immaculate seasons at Inter Milan, one of the best box-to-box mids in the world. And what's crazy is I thought he was good like a year, two years ago. I I think he was even better this year, truly. He's gotten better at passing. His decision-making is elite now, and he still has that dog in him. He still has that physical grit box-to-box. He's one of the most complete midfielders, I think, at this tournament. he's the next, like, great Italian midfielder? Yeah, that truly. And I think he's honestly, like, in the midst of doing that already he's 26 years of age he's in his prime or maybe 27 but still what he does on the pitch speaks for itself and then Jorginho needs no introduction we've seen how good he has been and how instrumental he's been at Arsenal three years ago they had Verratti and I think what he brought to the pitch for Italy was pure fluidity and honestly just the know-how how to outdo any midfield pressure what a player bro what a player yeah and yeah, look, I forgot about him. You, you, <laughs> Damn, well, he's been what gone. He's player, been, he, 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 he fell off the face of the earth. Man. Yeah, he's yeah, gone completely. <laughs> he's completely gone. And there is not a single guy who can replace what Verratti brought to the table. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's a massive miss in midfield. But, I think what Spalletti's probably going to do is he could play Pellegrini, who plays at Roma, and he had a good season this year. You could play Davide Fratesi, who's also good at Inter Milan this year too. 
those players can work, but they're just not even close to what Verratti was. They're just not even close. And I think that's a big miss. So there's one area. I think the second area is actually in the center back position, not because of the quality, but because when you look at what once was there oh, three I mean, yeah. years ago, bro, Chiellini and Bonucci. Oh, yeah. And then, bro, 10 years before that, Maldini. Exactly. Gattuso, like, we got legends at the back. Exactly. This, yeah, for sure, the weakest, I don't know, aura <laughs> that you've yeah. seen in an Italian back line in a really long time. I agree with that, but yeah. they're still really good. They are really good, but I truly think that that aura, that know-how, that experience that both Chiellini and Bonucci legends of the game brought three years ago is low-key why they're able to stay in those very tight matches and then you know Chiesa goes off and gets a crazy goal I think that's why Italy were successful ultimately because Chiellini was doing Chiellini things that's true. No, right. and again the skill at the back is very good for Italy right now but I mean these guys aren't made they're not established like Chiellini and Bonucci were and I, I do think that actually is a downgrade now in four years time or hell even two years at the World Cup Italy might have another really really good back line and there might be legends in the making but right now that doesn't exist no, that's fair that's really fair I was reading a comment online about uh, from an Italian point of view is an Italian saying how he approaches Italy games now. He says that him and a lot of Italian fans live on a game-to-game -game basis. No expectations anymore for Italy, bro. Because it makes sense. At Man. one point, you're losing to North Macedonia <laughs> and not making it to the fucking World Cup. And the and the next, you're lifting the fucking Euros against one of the best England generations we've ever seen, yeah. man. And then you just compare this team and the names to what they had in the 90s and the 2000s. Like, it's just so drastic that you can't have expectations with this Italian team. And that's why I'm just left so confused because I'm like, where do I put them then? What team are we going to see? Because you mentioned these defenders as being the weakest point. It, it is kind of make or break for them, this tournament, to see where they stand in the the upper echelon of defenders in Europe. Can they be a top three defense in Europe right off the bat and establish themselves as that for the next 10 years? Or will it be clear that they still have a lot of work to do? We'll find out, bro. And that's kind of my, my ultimate take with this team is I'm just going to have to wait and see. I'm just going to have to wait and see. So, folks, in the comments, let me know what do you think about this Italian team and how they're going to perform because anything you have to give me, I will I will take like a sponge and receive it because I'm so curious to see how they perform. If I have to pick a spot for them, bro, I think I'm going to go third. I think I, I'm going to go third, man. Dude, yeah, I, I, I can't believe I'm saying it too, but I think I am going to go third as well just because there's just so much unknown. But the thing is, I won't be surprised if they get second. I won't be surprised if they top the group. Yeah, that too. Like, yeah. I won't be surprised if they end up showing out here at this tournament because, as you already said, they have quality, man. I mean, Chiesa just went off at the Coppa Italia final, and when he's healthy, is one of the best forward-winger like hybrids in the game. Yeah. So Italy still have insane talent. I, I just wonder if they're going to show up. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's, that's actually crazy then that we both have them third then. It's yeah, pretty nuts. But I think that also shows that this group, I think, is deceptively tricky, man. Yeah. You look at the rest of the teams, and honestly, I don't think it's an easy way out to the top of this group, no matter who you are. I think that's why they called it the, the group of death. Right after the draw, they named this as the group of death with Albania, Spain, Croatia, and Italy. 